name is Amanda Bullchafin. I work at the Lane Community Technology Center in downtown Hamilton, Ohio. We have a lot of fun technology that you can learn how to use, from virtual reality to 3D printing to laser etching and more. If you're anything like me, your luggage looks a little plain. It's a little generic. It's black, it's boxy, it has wheels at the bottom. You know, it looks just like everyone else's. That can be a nightmare at baggage claim. A custom luggage tag can make all the difference. Today, we're going to make our own custom luggage tags with free vector graphic software and the Tech Center's Glowforge. The first thing you want to do is buy your material. I'm using Glowforge's own proof grade branded leather. If you prefer to use your own leather, make sure it's natural leather. Synthetic leathers are not safe for use in the Glowforge. I recommend using thin material, no thicker than an eighth of an inch. Thicker materials are harder for the Glowforge to cut. Make sure to purchase more material than you need for your project. The more you test and refine your cut and edge settings, the better your final results will be. Once you have your material, it's time to download and install Inkscape. Inkscape is free vector graphics software available from inkscape.org. Okay, so here we are in Inkscape. Generally, you've got your design tools on the left, you've got your refinement tools over here on the right, some details along the top, and then colors and zoom along the bottom. Let's start by setting up our document properties. If you're like me, you're going to want to change your workspace measurements to reflect the material that you're actually working on. So we're gonna go up here and we're gonna hit File, and then Document Properties. There we go, that's gonna open up right over here. And first, let's set our units of measurement. We have to set that in two places. So here, where it says millimeters, we're gonna change that to inches. And then under Display Units, also, change that to inches. Good, so you can see our ruler here is in inches as well. Now we're gonna choose our workspace dimensions. For this, I'm gonna choose 11 inches by 20 inches. The actual dimensions of the leather are 12 by 20, but the print head can't hit the top of the leather, so I'm gonna cut it out of my workspace. So right here, we're changing the width to 20, and then the height to 11. All right, good, so at this point, you can go ahead and just hit this little X here in the tab to close the document properties. And you can zoom in and out as needed and kind of rearrange on your workspace so that you have a nice central view. Now is a good time to either press Control S or Command S on a Mac or to go to File, Save As, and save your work. Make sure you keep the file extension SVG. This is the file type that later we're going to upload to the Glowforge app. You can design your own shape for the body of the tag in Inkscape, but I decided to use a free shape from a website called Love Paper Crafts, link below. You are just gonna scroll down right here where it says Curvy Tag SVG Downloads. You're just gonna click there and download the file, okay? And you can see here that the download is free and you are allowed to use it in your personal and commercial projects. So I'm covered there, I'm allowed to use it. Credit is appreciated but not required. So I think Chelsea's great. I'm gonna go ahead and give her credit. That's what I'm doing when I'm acknowledging where I got the file and linking you to it, but I don't have to. Whenever you're using someone else's art as a basis for your own, it's important to first establish that you're allowed to use it and second, give credit if you can. Okay, so now that we have the file, how do we get it back into Inkscape? So you go back to Inkscape and you're gonna click File and Import. And then you're just gonna navigate to where you left it. This is Kirby Tags SVG. It's here in my downloads. And then I'm actually going to bring in this Kirby Tags SVG here. And go ahead and include SVG image as editable object, okay? Now click on your tags here and just drag it to the center. And now we're going to go up to object and we're gonna click ungroup. You can see that you can click these separately so we are just going to click the smaller one here and we're going to press the delete key. If you're enjoying this video and you want more like it, don't forget to like and subscribe or even leave a comment. You can also give us a shout out on Facebook. It helps us spread the word about all the cool resources and services we offer. Okay, so now we need to create the strap. We're gonna use the rectangle tool to create a rectangle, a little strap. That's this square here on the left hand side. So I'm just going to click on it and then I'm going to click and drag anywhere in my workspace. Okay, so now we're going to click on our little selection tool here 
and you'll see some new options appear here at the top. We're gonna make sure we're in inches here, and then we are gonna resize our strap to a maximum width of 0.75 inches. So you can just type that in. And then we want a maximum height of six inches. Again, you can just type that in. Now we're also gonna hit this little lock here. So with that lock enable, it locks the proportions of your shape. So if you resize it, it is going to keep those proportions intact no matter what size you make it. So let's roughly position this so that it matches up with our tag. We'll align it later, but right now we just need a rough position. Okay, so now we have to cut out a little hole from the center because that's how we're actually going to attach our luggage tag to our luggage. So to do that, we're gonna make sure this arrow, the selection tool is selected, and we're gonna select our strap. Now we're gonna hit Control or Command D for duplicate. There's no visual confirmation that something is there. I find it easier just to pop down here and change the color. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to make sure only this top one is selected. And we're gonna resize this duplicated strap to a maximum of 0.3 inches and a maximum of five inches. So 0.3 on the width and five on the height. And again, we're just gonna roughly place it here in the center. Now it's time to actually align it. So we're gonna open up our little alignment tool. It's usually gonna be along the side here. Sometimes it's hidden and you have to use this little arrow. Click on it and choose align and distribute. So there's our align and distribute menu. So what I'm gonna do is with my selection tool active, I'm gonna select the smaller of the two rectangles and then I'm gonna hold down shift and select the larger. So now in the alignment menu where it says relative to, I'm gonna change that to the biggest object. And then if you hover here, you'll see this center one here says center on vertical axis, and this one says center on horizontal axis. So if I just click both of those, you'll see that now my smaller rectangle has been centered vertically and horizontally relative to my larger rectangle. Now, how do we make that smaller rectangle a hole? How do we cut that out of the larger one? Make sure your selection tool is active. Select the smaller one, hold down shift, select the larger one. So they're both selected. And now we're gonna go to path and difference. And there you see, it's all cut out. You have an actual hole now in the center of your strap. So obviously we now need to align this strap more properly to our tag. I bet you can figure out how we're gonna do this. We're going to hold down shift, select both. Relative to biggest object is fine. And we are just gonna center that up on the vertical axis. We don't wanna center this one on the horizontal axis because look what happens. So we're just gonna control Z and we're gonna keep that right where it was. Now what, what do we do now? We're gonna go and join these. So this is one shape, one object instead of two. To do that, you make sure that both pieces are selected. Remember to hold down the shift key to select both. And then you go to path and then click union. And now you see we have one cohesive shape here. So before we have a shape that our laser can cut out, we actually need to change one more thing. We need to turn this into an outline. What we're doing here is we're creating a nice easy path for our laser to follow. So how do we do that? Well, we are gonna open up our fill and stroke menu or our paint menu. It looks like a little paintbrush. You'll find it right down here. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And with this selected, we're gonna click, you'll see it has three tabs, fill, stroke, and stroke style. So we're gonna click on fill and we're gonna click this X. It's going to disappear for a minute. Please don't panic, it's still there. We're gonna go to this stroke tab next. And see this little flat square? If you hover over, it's called flat color. Click on that suddenly you reappear as an outline. So I'm gonna take my R here. I have a color menu here, RGB. I'm just gonna take the R all the way up to the top to 255. So I'm making that a red line and I'm gonna use red as my cut color. And then I'm gonna use this last tab, stroke style. I'm gonna click on that. And then here where it says inches, I'm actually gonna change that to point. And you can see my line here is a little thin. I'm just gonna click on here and I'm gonna change that to one. So it's one point. Now you can see that the line is much bolder. This is gonna be a nice, easy path for our laser to follow. Okay, so now it's time to add our text. We're gonna select our text tool. It looks like a little A here. We're just gonna click it, and then we are gonna click anywhere on our screen. 
And now you're just going to type your name, your address, whatever the information is that you want to put on this luggage tag. So once you have your text here, you have some options. Uh, make sure your text tool is selected and then you can highlight, just highlight everything in your text box. I like to center align my text, that's right up here, this one. And then I can change my font. I like to choose a thicker font because that comes out better with the laser. And you can take your time with this and really choose one that you think uh, will look good. So you can kind of go through them a little. Arial black is one that I like because it's nice and thick. But I mean, you have other options. Here's rounded. You can do something a little more creative. It's entirely up to you. I think I'm going to stick with Arial black. And then what you do is you select your uh, selection tool, move that down, select your text tool, highlight your text, and let's choose our font size. There we go, I'm trying to get it to fit in here pretty nice. So I'm just gonna drag it where I want it, and then of course I'm gonna align it. So I click on it, hold down shift, click on the tag, go to my alignment tool, Biggest object is fine, and let's just center it. There we go, good job. Now it's time to add a little flair to your design. I always, always, always recommend very simple line art or clip art for line etching. The contrast between really simple bold lines and the natural material of the leather is really what gives each piece its own unique laser etched look. For this project, I actually got my graphics from a really incredible design tool called Canva. I have a paid membership to Canva. You can create a free account with them, but you may have access to fewer graphics options than I do. You can also find embellishments elsewhere on the web or even draw your own. You don't need a Canva account to finish this tutorial. If you find your embellishments elsewhere, the process of downloading, importing, and preparing your images will be exactly the same. The only difference will be where and how you find your images. So here I am in Canva. I'm in a presentation file that I used when I did this particular class in person. I have just opened a blank page. Now I'm going to find some travel themed graphics. So I'm just gonna go here to elements. And in here I'm gonna type travel. And I'm gonna hit enter. And let's do see all here under graphics. And I really like this dotty plane here, but I kind of want a paper plane. But if I click it, I get these magic recommendations. I really like that. So I can hit see all. And now I get all kinds of similar graphics. But let's say I really want a paper plane. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna type that. And then here we go. You can see it's kind of learned based on what I've already selected, kind of what I'm looking for. And so it makes the process of finding things much easier. So I'm just gonna choose one I like, and I'm gonna pull it on over. And I'm gonna delete my old one. Now all I have to do is save this. So I'm gonna go up here to share, and I'm actually gonna download my design because this is the last page. I'm just gonna do the last page here. And instead of a PDF, I'm gonna save this as a PNG. And then I'm gonna hit download. Okay, so how do we get that file into Inkscape? Here we are back in Inkscape. We are just gonna go to File and Import. Okay, and we're gonna go back here to Downloads. And we should have where it says Luggage Tags PNG. We're gonna click on that and click Open. Now we're gonna choose Smooth here and click OK. Now you notice how you can't see behind it. It's including all this background. We're gonna get rid of the background. So we are going to go to Path, Trace Bitmap. Let's just hit Update Preview, see what it does. That looks good. So we're gonna hit Apply. Now we're gonna pull this new one away and we're gonna select and then delete using the delete key, the old one. Now you see how you can see through it? Okay, so there's one more thing we need to do. We need to turn this into a path. So we're gonna go to path, object to path. Let's go ahead and click on the lock to lock in the proportions and let's resize. And if you click again, you'll see how the arrows change. Now you can rotate. So go ahead and position that however you want. I think that looks cute. Now that we have our text finalized, we have to click on it and do path, object to path. Now you can no longer edit that text as text. 
it's a path for our laser to follow. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do is we are gonna change the colors. I'm gonna click on my text and I'm gonna go back here to my fill and stroke and I'm gonna hit fill, flat color, and I'm gonna change this color to green. I'm just gonna pull the G all the way up to 255. And now I'm gonna click on my graphic and I'm gonna take the G back down to zero and I'm gonna take the B up to 255. What these colors are for is to set up different layers inside Glowforge so that we can choose different options. Glowforge lets you cut, score, which is an outline, or engrave, which engraves the whole shape. Okay, so last but not least, we are going to do Control A to select all. We are going to do Object Group, and then Path Object to Path, and Save. Okay, so now it's time to actually use the Glowforge laser cutter. Let's go ahead and load the material first. Leather, being soft and pliant, has a tendency to warp a little bit. I like to use these little honeycomb pins to make sure that my leather is flat against the crumb tray. A user in the Glowforge community forums, username lhefe4, posted these pins and I just cut some out of scrap one day. Link in the description. Here we are in the Glowforge app. We are located in Hamilton, Ohio, which is just north of Cincinnati. If you happen to be in the area and you want to use our Glowforge, we would log you into our account and start you off from this screen. If you have your own Glowforge, log in with your own account. So it looks like this. We're going to click this Create a New Design button right here and then Upload a File. Choose the file you want to upload and then click Open. So once it loads, it looks like this. There's a camera in the machine, so this is actually what your material looks like. We have our material up here at the top. Ours was automatically selected because we're using proof grade material and the QR code is visible. If your QR code is not visible or if you are using a different material, you need to select that now. And then underneath we have our layers. This example project only has two layers. Your project should have three, each layer corresponding with one of the colors that you chose during the tutorial. Let's move the design where we want it. Go ahead and feel free to just eyeball it. Now you're going to choose these three dots labeled more. Choose set focus and then click in roughly the center of your design. This focuses the camera inside the Glowforge just like your camera at home. Now click print. After a few calculations, your print will be ready. You'll want to press the glowing button on the Glowforge and stay in the room to keep an eye on it while it prints. Proofgrade material comes with a layer of masking tape over the top to protect the leather from charring. The heat may have made the adhesive backing sticky, so wait 30 minutes or so and then gently peel away the tape. Now just loop the tag through your luggage handle. If you're located near Cincinnati or Hamilton, Ohio, and you'd like to learn more about how to design and etch a project of your own, or you'd like to attend any of our in-person tech classes, give us a call at 513-785-2727 or email us at techcenter at lanepl.org. For hours and location information, check out our website at lanepl.org. <laughs>